the binomial theorem, and I'll scroll this up here in a second for you. Um, actually, let's probably you wait. There we go. Okay, so we'll start over again. The binomial theorem. The binomial theorem is a way of multiplying out um, polynomials. Okay, so if I have a binomial raised to a certain power, like x plus 2 squared, 3, uh, 3x minus 5 cubed, um, x plus 2 to the fifth power. The binomial theorem lets me do that without multiplying it out several times. It gives me a shortcut for foiling out a binomial, okay, using Pascal's triangle. So let me go ahead and bring this up. This is Pascal's triangle. Okay, there's a pattern. You should see that pattern. You need to fill in the parts of the pattern that aren't there. Okay. There are lots of uses for Pascal's triangle. This is the only one we're going to talk about in here. But if you want to go research something that's kind of interesting, this is one of those things. I've seen posters where they have all kinds of stuff. The numbers have patterns to them. There's all kinds of interesting things that comes out of Pascal's triangle. We use it for one thing. Named after Blaise Pascal, the mathematician that came up with this, who was also one of the first people to program a computer. In fact, he programmed computers before electricity existed. No, what he came up with is the idea of in the future there will be a machine. A machine will be a series of on-off switches, which is what a computer is, and it will be run by logic. And this is how they will work. And he described how computers work. And he came up with what we would call now a pseudocode, which is basically the logic code that drives computers. Now, it's not the actual computer language. He didn't come up with that, although there is a computer language, Pascal, that was named after him. That was one of the earlier computer languages used mostly in the 80s, but in the 90s a little bit too. I've actually programmed in it because I took that class rather than Fortran because, oh, Fortran was a pain in the butt. It was good for science, but man, it was nasty to program with. Pascal was a walk in the park to program with, and I had to do one of the two. Okay. Um, and it's a dead language now as far as computer programming goes. But it was, Pascal was one, but he actually came up with the idea is it, it'll be a bunch of if-then statements. And it will run by logic. Before electricity existed, he described what the modern day computer is and how they would operate. Think about that. When did he get 1700s? This is before electricity was anything like what we have now. It wasn't like, you know, we nobody had it in their houses. Nobody had any, there wasn't, there was electricity. Electrical machines did not exist. It was just, yeah, he just figured it out. Hey, they're going to have this. In the future, I see that there's going to be a machine that will work this way. And they actually built computers that just you flick toggles instead. They were mechanical things. Eventually, they became computers that we know driven by electric, you know, electrical switches. It's kind of cool when you think about it. Okay? So when kids say, oh, I hate math, but I want to do computers, that's why I bang my head against the wall. They just don't get it because computers are math in almost its purest form. Okay. So if you look, it's very easy to see the pattern. Start with one, one and one. It's all ones down the edges. To get the number down below it, you add the two above. One plus one is two. One plus two is three. Three plus three is six and so on to get the numbers down below. So you have to have that triangle fill in. I finished off what should be there that you need. Okay. Now, how we are going to use this is to expand polynomials. The idea is if I have a binomial, A plus B, something plus something, raised to a power, Pascal's triangle gives me the coefficients that go in helps me find the coefficients in front of those terms. So to the zero power one, it's just one, because anything to the zero power is one. But if I take a times b to the first power, so I, have, I mean a plus b to the first power, first power, get it, first power, that's one a plus one b. If I take a plus b and square it, I get a squared, a, B, B squared. 
third row would be to the, sorry, the fourth row down would be the third power. A plus B to the third power. 1 A cubed, 3 A squared B, 3 A B squared, 1 B cubed. I take whatever A is and I cube it. Multiply that times 1. That's my first term. My second term is A squared, whatever A is, times B, times 3. The third term in my polynomial is A times B squared times 3. The last term would be B cubed times 1. Now, notice something that's going on with the powers. Okay, in the first power row, it's A to the first, B to the first. Second power row, A to the second, A to the first. Third power row, a cubed, a squared, a to the first. Fourth power row is going to have a to the fourth, a cubed, a squared, a. And then I start on this end with my b's, and I have descending powers to go with it. Do you see the pattern in there? Because this is about, Pascal's triangle is all about patterns. So when you get to the middle of the fourth row, it would be um, a, a, a squared, b squared. So I want to fill in, so so I can, let's skip right down here to the fifth row. I can do A plus B. So I have these numbers are part of my, each individual term in my polynomial. When I, when I multiply this out, A times B to the fifth power, when I multiply that out, A times A plus B 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 because it's five. Okay. So I multiplied that all out. Combined up like terms, I would have fifth power is my first one, a to the fifth, a to the fourth, a cubed, a squared, a, b to the fifth, b to the fourth, b cubed, b squared, b, and no b at the end. And I would take whatever that a term is and raise it to the fifth power and it would go there. And then the second term, I would take a to the fourth power, whatever it is, b to the first power, multiply those two numbers, multiply that times three. And that would be the second term in my polynomial. So it's a shortcut of doing it rather than multiplying it out. Let's look at an example together. Okay. So let's say I want to do x minus 1 cubed. The long way. x minus 1 times x minus 1 times x minus 1. I multiply it out. Well, I can't multiply all three things at once because they're binomials. So I take the first two and I multiply them out. And I get x squared minus 2x plus 1. And then I take that times x minus 1 again. And I go, OK. Well, I take all of these times x, x cubed minus 2x squared plus 1x, and then I take all of these times negative 1, negative 1x squared plus 2x minus 1. I combine up my like terms that I have, so I get x cubed minus 3x squared, and then so x squared, and then x and 2x give me plus 3x. Minus one. Now that's not too bad. That's only to the third power, right? But if I wanted to do that, yeah, that's a negative one x squared. What if I wanted to do it to the seventh power? Then I'd have to take that times x minus one. Then I'd have to take that times x minus one. Then I'd have to take that times x minus one. Then I'd have to take that times x minus one. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? It's not too bad to the third power. It's still kind of a pain. But if I use Pascal's triangle, I go back here to Pascal's triangle. And I go, OK, I'm taking a plus b cubed, third power, which means I take whatever the first term is and I cube it, and then I square it. And then I do it to the first power, and then I take the last term, cube it, square it to the first power, and multiply times 3, 1, and 2. Okay? So here's what I do. 
What's my A in X minus 1, X minus 1, what's my A term? X. Ooh. Ooh, that was close. Ooh, that was close. I've done that once. I've done that once. It was a very small mark, and I got it off right away. So this is my A. What's my B? Negative 1. So using Pascal's triangle third row, I have 1 times whatever A is cubed plus 3, because 3 is the next one over in the third power row, times whatever A is squared times whatever B is, okay, plus 3 times whatever A is, which is X, times whatever B is squared, plus 1 times whatever B is cubed. So 1 times X cubed is X cubed. 3 times X squared times negative 1 minus 3X squared. 3 times X times negative 1 squared. What's negative 1 squared? 1. So 3 times X times 1 plus 3X plus 1 times negative 1 cubed. Negative 1 cubed is negative 1 minus 1. And looky looky. Same thing. Now, to the third power, this is actually probably easier. Okay? But if I'm like going to the seventh power, oh, no, I'm using Pascal's triangle in a heartbeat. And yes, you will be given Pascal's triangle to the test, so don't sweat having to memorize this. I know, some of you, I get to see the fingers. Holy crap, I gotta remember that. Oh my. But really, how hard is If you can do this, and figure out the pattern, it's really not that hard to take a second and write it down before the test. But I will have it available for the test. I'm not going to do that to you. Okay? This? 2x. 1x, 2x. Give you 3x's. Okay? So Pascal's triangle is just a shortcut for multiplying. It's a shortcut for multiplying this stuff out. That's what it is. Okay? So let's do a couple of these together. First thing you have to do is you have to identify what your A and your B are. Okay? So I have A is M and B equals 3. And then you find in the triangle what row I'm dealing with. I'm dealing with the fourth power row. One, four, six, four, one. Okay. So that means I have one, and that's the fourth power, a to the fourth power. Plus, and then it's four times m cubed. And then I start adding in whatever my b is and start raising its powers up plus 6 m squared b squared plus 4 m to the first b to the third plus 1 times whatever b is to the fourth power. Okay. Follow the pattern. Whatever the first term is. What, what's my power that I'm raising it to? Fourth power. So I go to my fourth power row. I'm going to start whatever that first term is. Fourth power, third power, second power, first power. That's what I have down here. M. My first term is M. M to the fourth power. M to the third power. M to the second power. M to the first power. 4, 3, 2, 1. Why is it 4, 3, 2, 1? Because I start with 4 because that's the power I'm doing. And then my B's work in the exact opposite direction. 4, 3, 2, 1. Why do I end with 4th power on B? Because the whole thing is to the 4th power. And then you have to take every one of those terms times these, these numbers here. 
And now you do the arithmetic to simplify it out. So I have 1 times m to the fourth. What's 1 times m to the fourth? m to the fourth. Because this is not my final answer. This is just using the formula to set it up. m to the fourth. Now the next term. 4 times m cubed times 3. Well, 4 times 3 is 12. So I have 12 m cubed. Okay. 6 times m squared times 3 squared. 3 squared is 9. 9 times 6 is 54 m squared. Plus 4 times 3 cubed. 3 cubed is 27. 4 times 27 is 100, and then 4 times 2 is 108. And if you're not sure and can't figure it out in the head, you got a calculator. Use it. Use your calculators. Don't rely on me for everything. You should be doing it too, so that way you learn it. Right? Because you just wait for me to write down the answer. You're not doing it yourself. Okay. And then 1 times 3 to the 4th. 3 to the 4th is 27 cubed. Oh, my God. He's 3 to the 4th. 81. Thank you. Thank you. Plus 81. It's been a while since I've done 3 to the 4th. That's my answer. Using the expansion. Okay. Let's do the next one together. What's my A? A is M. What's my B? B is negative 4. So, and I'm doing it to what power? To the fifth. Woo, it's going to take up a lot of space. I don't know if I can write that small. <laughs> okay, so I start here. 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. Those are my coefficients. So I have 1 times A to the fifth power. Why to the fifth power? Because it's the fifth power. Plus, and then what's the next one? Five. Five times a to the fourth power, b to the first power. And here's a clue. My exponents always add up to the total power. So here I have this to the first, right? What's four plus one? Five. If I go back here and look, if you pause and go back here and look, third power, 2 plus 1 is 3, 1 plus 2 is 3, third power, the exponents add up to give you what the power is, okay? There's patterns, there's patterns, patterns, patterns. You start seeing and recognizing patterns in your math, it's going to be a lot easier for you. Start looking for the power. Oh, I see a pattern to it. Oh, the exponents always add up. Great. And you know that if you're doing it right, those exponents better add up. Okay. So 5, 4, 1, and then it's what? It's 10 plus 10 times m cubed. And then negative 4 squared because 3 plus 2 is 5. And I know that if I'm descending and start, then I have to eventually start adding this add up to 5 plus 10 m squared negative 4 cubed plus 5 m to the first negative 4 to the fourth plus 1 times negative 4 to the fifth. And then you start simplifying your numbers. Okay, four to the fifth power is a big number. Let me see my calculator. M to the fifth plus negative four times five. That's easy. So that it should actually be minus twenty. M to the fourth. Negative four squared. That's sixteen. Sixteen times ten plus one hundred and sixty m cubed. Negative 4 cubed, that's negative 64 times 10, 
negative 640 um, squared plus one, four to the fourth power is 256. 256 times 5 is 1280. 1280M. And then 4 to the fifth power is 1024. 1024. Okay. Would you rather do m minus 4 times n minus 4 and take that times m minus 4 and take that times m minus 4 and take that times m minus 4 and then get that? No. Pain in the butt. You can do it, but it's a pain in the butt. Okay. This work actually works easier. Once you recognize the pattern, it's not that hard. Okay, is there a fourth one down here? There's only yeah. three. Oh. Okay, now it gets a little more difficult. I know what you're thinking. Really? It gets harder? 3y minus 2 cubed. Thank God it's only cubed. What's my a? 3y. What's my b? Negative 2. So I start using the pattern. Third power. Third power. 1, 3, 3, 1. So I have 1 times 3y cubed. First term cubed. Plus 3 times 3y squared times negative 2 to the first, right, to the first, because the exponents have to add up to 3, so I'm doing the third power row, plus 3 times 3y to the first times negative 2 squared, plus 1 times negative 2 cubed. Okay, 3y cubed. 3 cubed is 27, y cubed is y cubed, so my first term is 27y cubed. Okay. Now I have to square my 3y. 3y squared is 9y squared, so I take the y squared and just kind of mentally set it off to the side. So I've got 9 times 3 in front, which is 27, times negative 2, negative 54y squared. Okay, 3 times 3y, that's 9y. 9 times negative 2 squared. Negative 2 squared is 4. 4 times 9 is 36, so it's plus 36y. And then negative 2 cubed is negative 8. Okay. Does that make sense? Are you starting to see what the pattern is? It's like I said, cubing, yeah, not that big deal. But look at the next one. 2a plus 5 to the fifth power. Okay, that's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm going to go to here. The coefficients are going to be big, but I've got a calculator. I can take 5 to the fifth power on my calculator. I can take 5 to the 4th power of my calculator and multiply it times 2. And then multiply it times 5 again. You've got a calculator. The numbers aren't that hard if you've got a calculator to raise your powers. So it isn't terribly difficult when you get to that point. Does that make sense? Okay. I want you to do those three. Do those three. Actually, for time constraints, for current kind of time constraints where we're at now, I want you to do this one and do this one. Do those two. Okay. Kind of, we'll see how time goes because we do have one more thing we need to finish up on this. Okay. So, uh, we're doing the fourth row. So, it's 14641. Four, 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 so, my A is X. My B is 2. So that means I have 1x to the 4th 
plus 4x cubed times 2 plus uh, 6x squared uh, 2 squared plus 4x to cubed plus 1 times 2 to the 4th. And then I simplify. x to the 4th, 4 times 2 plus 8x cubed. 2 squared is 4 times 6 plus 24x squared. 2 cubed is 8 times 4 is plus 32x. And 2 to the 4th is 16. Excuse me. Okay, and the next one down. A is 2V. B is negative 1. Once again, it's to the 4th power. 2V to the 4th. Plus 4 times 2V cubed times negative 1. To the 1st plus 6 times 2V squared times negative 1 squared plus 4 times 2v to the 1st times negative 1 cubed, plus 1 times negative 1 to the 4th power. So 2v to the 4th. 2 to the 4th is 16. v to the 4th is v to the 4th. So I get 16v to the 4th. And then I have 2v cubed. That's 8v cubed. 8 times 4 is 32. Times negative 1 is negative 32v to the 4th. 2v squared, that's 4v squared. 4 times 6 is 24. Negative 1 squared is 1. So plus 24v cubed, or v squared. That should be a cube here. Yeah, I got my powers wrong. I'm saying it, but I'm writing down the wrong power. v to the 5th minus, that was 8 times 4, right? 30, yeah, 32. It's 4 again. Why did I write down it? to the 4 again? 32v cubed plus 4 times 6, 24v squared. And then 4 times 2 is 8 minus 1, so negative 8v plus 1. Okay, sorry, my powers are right now. Power Coefficients are right. Sorry, my powers. Okay. So if you turn to the next page, now here's a really cool thing about Pascal's triangle. Let's say I don't want the whole thing, but I want a particular term number. Your choices are use Pascal's triangle or multiply the whole thing out and then, 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 then count over. So I want the third term in 2w minus 3 to the 6th power. I want the third term. Okay, so my third term. So to the 6th power, which means I go down to here, right, to this row here. 1, 2, 3, third term means that I start with 15. And then I take my a to a power and b to a power. What's my a? 2w. What's my b? Negative 3. Third term over. So I start with, what, is I, what do I start with? What's the highest power here? 6. 6, 5, 4. 6, 5, 4. Count down. So it's going to be 2w to the fourth term. It'll be negative 3 to the fourth power. It'll be negative 3 to what power? What do these two have to add up to? Six. So this will be to the second power. Okay. Six term. Uh, third term. Six one down. So third term. First term has to what power? Six power. Second term has it to the fifth power. Third term has it to the fourth power. Six five four. Third term. Does that make sense? And then what do the powers have to add up to? They have to add up to 6. That's how I get the second one. And then you pull out your calculator. And I will pull out my calculator on this one. So all clear. So 15 times 2 to the 4th is 16. Times 3 squared is 9. 2160. W to the 4th. That is the third term in the big long polynomial. So I want to find the fifth term in x minus 4 to the seventh. 
So I go to the seventh power row, which is the bottom one down here. And I want the fifth term, right? One, two, three, four, five. Thirty-five. Yeah, thirty-five. So I have thirty-five. X, because X is my A. B is negative four, and I need to find the power still. So I start out in seventh power, and I want to go to what? The fifth? Fifth, fifth power, fifth term, right? Seven, six, five, four, three. See how I did that? I start with seventh power, and I count up five. Seven, count down from seven to the fifth term. Seven, six, five, four, three. Third power on my fifth term. If that's the third power, what does the other one have to be? The fourth power because I have to add up to seven. And then once again, oh dear Lord, please break out your calculator on this one. Negative four to the fourth power, sorry, four, not a seven, fourth power. So four, four, 256 times 35. 8,960 X cubed. No, because negative 4 to the 4th power, negative times negative, positive times negative times negative. If you have a negative to an even power, it will be positive, and negative to an odd power will be negative. Okay? Yes? Yeah, because what your calculator is saying, you're doing 4 to the negative 4 power and then making the negative one. You have to put parentheses around your negative 4. Does that make sense? So before you go running off, do the top one. On the now you try, do the top one. Before you go running off, you got, hey, I still got you for three more minutes before the bell rings, and you're not dismissed till I see you can go. You got three minutes. Do that problem. Just the first one. I'm not making you do both. Do the first one. You know, when I was your age, I couldn't wait to get that class either. So. Although there are a few that were kind of fun, but most of them were the same way. Yeah, I bell get a ring! <laughs> I know. I don't care. <laughs> I'm too lazy to reach over and press the stop button. And it shouldn't take you that long anyway to do the problem. Okay, shouldn't take you that long. So what's my coefficient? Uh, fourth term, fifth row, one, two, three, four, five. So it's five. So I get five times my A to what power? That would end up being to the first power, right? Five, fourth term into five, five, four, three, sorry, five, four, three, two, second power, right? Yeah, fourth term. Ten, you're right, ten, my bad. So it's ten y squared, negative two cubed, negative two cubed is negative eight times ten, so you get negative eighty y squared. Okay, I do expect the rest of these problems to be finished when your notebacks are collected next week when you take the test. Good.